Welcome. Welcome all. Good morning. Does everybody come in and smell cinnamon rolls? You want me to like have a 45-minute sermon? <laughs> you want to get moving here or something? Something is happening, and it's exciting. Something new is growing within each one of us. It's been really nice as we've been getting back into fall season of seeing some more faces. Um, Today, celebrating having Matt and Mary with us as we celebrate, it's Matt's 99th birthday. He's he's now going, "Uh uh-oh, I think they're talking about me. And, and, And I think that is worthy of a song. Don't you think 99 years is worthy of a song? Let's, let's sing for Matt. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matt. Happy birthday to And it is wonderful to celebrate just being community in this life that we have. We've got a lot of exciting things happening. Um, Thank you for coming and sharing in all of that. We're glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Rob Smith. Welcome those at home. Welcome everyone here. Welcome to Spirit of Life together with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls, and all of our strength. Let us worship God. First, I'm not Alvin. (laughs) I'm Steve, and I welcome you too. Here's the call to worship. The colors of fall surround us, beauty of scarlet and gold. In the countryside, there's still a stir as all of the hard work of planting and tending now moves to harvest. Seeds of many kind, sown and multiplied, sustaining us with life. Now as we gather, help us join in planting seeds in good soil, seeds of hope and generosity, seeds of justice, peace, and joy, seeds of caring for one another. Let us worship God.
friends in all of life, in all the places that, that we've been. In Christ, we're made new. In Christ, we have new life. Hear the good news. In all things, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us now take a moment in following the passing of peace. Coffee is ready, and we're sitting around table, and we're getting ready for breakfast. So help yourself after we greet people. Help yourself in the back to some coffee, and, and uh, especially when we get to the sermon, to make sure you stay awake, Bob. Um, uh, but keep your, keep your coffee fresh, and let us, let us pass the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's pass the peace of Christ. Now we, we welcome Kelly to help share our prayer of illumination as she helps introduce our theme and as she helps open us in prayer. Good morning, everybody. Sure wish I could have some coffee and cinnamon rolls. Actually, I'd have to have water, but that's okay. So as a member of stewardship, stewardship, I would like to introduce or continue our theme a little bit. Spirit of life, 
carefully. Every Sunday we greet you. Candles of light burn green and bright. We are happy to see you. Plant a seed and watch it grow, watch it grow next year. Spirit of life, family, welcome us forward together. Make a pledge and watch it grow, new grow stronger together. Use your gifts and your time to bless our church family. With your support, we will be planting seeds of success here. We love our God, and He loves us. All we have is His. <coughs> Boy, I hope that first verse came out okay. There's an echo over here. <laughs> The scripture for today is from Matthew 13, verses 1 through 8, and this is from the Message version of the Bible. At about that same time, Jesus left the house and sat on the beach. In no time at all, a crowd gathered along the shoreline, forcing him to get into a boat. Using the boat as a pulpit, he addressed his congregation, telling stories. What do you make of this? A farmer planted seed. As he scattered the seed, some of it fell on the road and birds ate it. Some fell in the gravel. It sprouted quickly, but didn't put down roots. So when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the weeds. As it came up, it was strangled by the weeds. Some fell on good earth and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for sharing that song with us. We're so grateful. Okay, now it's time for everything you've been waiting for. Farmer Bob, great to see you. How's it growing? Hi, Susie. It's growing pretty good. Growing good? How? Because we are planting seeds. Farmer Bob, I am kind of embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? Well, I wet my plants. Wet your plants? That's good. They need the water. And Susie, if you think you're embarrassed, well, I soiled my plants. With good soil, I hope. Of course. Can you tell me more about planting seeds? Well, the farmer plants seeds. Some fall on the road. Some the birds eat, some fall in the gravel. Those ones won't grow. They won't have good roots, and when the sun comes up, they'll shrivel. Some seeds fall in the weeds. 
and when they start to grow, they're strangled by the weeds. The seeds that grow well, it's no secret, plant them in good soil. So when you ask, how's it growing? It's growing well, because here at Spirit of Life Farm, we are doing the hard work of being good soil. Hi, Farmer Bob, and hi, Susie. Hey, how's it growing? Good. Hey, look back there in the back. It's Mr. McFeely. Hey, Mr. McFeely, it's been a while. CD delivery. CD delivery. <laughs> hey, it's great to see you again, Mr. McFeely. But you were from our theme three years ago. I know, but I have a special delivery for the theme this year. But wait, what are you doing here? You were from the theme last year. Yeah, it was so good. Well, I thought maybe. Uh, I heard this year we had a Farmer Bob, and I was hoping with all of those cows and pigs that we could continue on again with last year's theme. I did bring you a chicken. Oh! Who are you? I'm Mr. Seedy. Hey, hi, Miss, Mr. Speedy. Who, who, who's over here? Who's, uh, who's hello, here? I'm Meat Man Dewey. Ooh, nice to meet you, Meat Man Dewey. Susie, I remember Susie. And who are you? Who hello, are you? Farmer Bob. I'm Farmer Bob the Puppet. Who wrote this script? <laughs> <laughs> CD delivery, CD delivery. What, what, what are you bringing us today? Seeds, special seeds. Ones from our very own church garden. Because God is up to something good. Planting seeds. We want to be rooted in Christ. Wow, that's wonderful. I see we have squash seeds and tomato seeds and apple seeds. And one of my favorite, beet seeds. I love beets. Whoa, Farmer Bob, what about bacon seeds? Bacon seeds? Oh, Meat Man Dewey. Yeah, bacon seeds because... Oh, no, not again. Oh, yeah, because we have... Stop, 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 Meat Man Dewey. I got it this year. We have, we have, we have the, we have the beach. It's the beets to meet the treat. And it's okay if you all groan. <laughs> Farmer Bob, he had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had some seeds, E-I-E-I-O. With some, some good, good soil here and some good soil there. Till the soil pulled the weeds, planted the seeds in the good soil. soil. Farmer Bob, he had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Farmer Bob, he had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm they had a garden. E-I-E-I-O With some, some green beans here and, and some okra there Here's there's some corn, there's some beans to share, share with neighbors everywhere Farmer Bob, he had a farm E-I-E-I-O Farmer Bob, he had a farm E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had some tractors E-I-E-I-O with the putt putt here and a vroom vroom there, plowing rows, planting seeds, working that great green machine. Farmer Bobby had a farm, E I E I O. Farmer Bobby had a farm, E I E I O. And on that farm they welcomed all, E I E I O. With some children here and some grandmas there. Friends online here in church, people joining everywhere. Farmer Bobby had a farm. E I E I O.
Thank you, Farmer Bob. We're looking forward to having you every week. We'll see what happens next week. We're planting seeds. What's it take to plant seeds? It takes care and nurture. And for us, it takes every one of us. It takes, it takes all of us. It's one of the cool things when, when Jesus talks about, when, he, when, when he's sharing parables, and he's talking to the disciples as they're worried about all the work that lies ahead, and, he's, and he shares the words that, that the harvest is bountiful, but the laborers are few. And so Jesus then sends the disciples out. And that's what we're doing. We're called to plant seeds. One of the things I hear consistently with everybody I meet, as I'm going out and seeing all of you, and in the people that I'm meeting everywhere, as I went to visit my mom this weekend and meeting people, as, as I go out to the coffee shops, I'm hearing, the, the cha- seeing the challenges, the challenge that we've, we've had after the last few years. And I equate it from our parable to we've been through some hard ground. We know where relationships have come hard. We know stress and anxiety and isolation. The ground has become compact. It's hardened. We all know rocky ground. We know rocky ground because we've been there. On the surface, where everything seems fine, you know how we do that. It's fine. It's good. But underneath, to know that people are longing for so much more. We know weeds. How easily our good habits start with one thing and then another. And then soon we're out of balance. How good habits nurture good habits and how when we stray from them, we, go, we fall further and further behind. But how strong prayer life, reading our Bible a little bit every night, of going to youth group, of coming to church, has a way of centering our life, of nurturing all that is good. It is through all of these ways that we nurture good soil. Now in our story, our farmer plants seeds everywhere, indiscriminate. As seeds are, as, as you picture the sower, just growing seeds indiscriminately everywhere, so they land everywhere. They land on the road where it's hard. They land in the gravel. They land in the weed beds. It's almost as if the farmer is providing for us a gift. That with everything that's happened, with all of the struggles, the farmer is asking us to help. Not just with ourselves but with our neighbors. Not with our, just our own life, but to go out into the places where it's hard, where together we are called to help cultivate good ground. Together, where the ground is rocky, let us help dig up rocks and build terraces. And the weeds, sometimes when we start, it seems overwhelming. But together, It doesn't take long. And as we pull the weeds, underneath that is some rich soil. We have a wonderful church, an incredible church, special people, tremendous people, loving people, 
story after story of the things that happen where you care for one another here and outside in our community. Just alone in the last week, In the last week, we had the crop walk. In our church, look at all the people actively walking and helping it with the bake sale. As last I heard, our team is the one that helped raise the most money for the crop walk. That not only is helping everywhere, but 25% of that, the funds stay right here. The other 75% are going to places in need. We have a, in a second, I'll pull up the next one. We have a church garden, a community garden, that almost every week for the last, Karen, how many weeks? Eight, nine weeks, 100 pounds a week plus of produce that goes to our local food shelf, of a team of volunteers that that come Monday and throughout the week as they tend the garden and nurture the garden in so many ways, helping provide good, healthy food to support those that hunger. Meet in the middle. One of the new exciting things that is ahead of us is we purchased 20 guitars. And most people haven't heard yet, but we were awarded in the last two weeks a grant for $16,800 to help intentionally provide music lessons for those that may not have access to music lessons in ways that are going to help equity, They're gonna, that are going to help in so many ways provide gifts for helping our children belong for helping support our kids. Another ministry at this church that if you're not a, not a part of, maybe you miss, but it's meeting tremendous need. As we have a, a grief group that meets on Thursday nights. Right now, we are in the middle of a group where I'm, I know of 13 many from outside of our church that are connecting with us every week, both in person and online, sharing in community, supporting one another, and the most important ministry of being there for people at times of loss and supporting one another. It's an incredible ministry happening. 26 weeks out of the year, we have grief group here at church. There's opportunities for those. Music's an important thing in the the life of this church, as we have a vibrant, active choir doing many different things, a place that we continue to nurture as we sing, and in singing, we help pray. Alone this last week, we shared, I shared in a graveside service for the sister of one of our members at a time of loss. In one week, these things plus youth group, plus sharing a meal together, plus all the ways that you helped others this week alone. It's a lot, and it's life-giving, and it's good soil. All of these are opportunities for us to grow. All of this is important, and it helps make a difference in people's lives for us, and it's making a difference with our neighbors. After everything we've been through, a frequent conversation I hear in one form or another is anxiety about the future of the church. Some of those ones here are maybe after COVID, somebody we haven't seen for a while. Or the news that we hear all the time about the trends of the decline in the church. We see it as we come into church on Sunday of the soccer fields that are full. Things have changed as as a lot of demands are placed on families that are very active in many ways about 
sports and our jobs that, are, that are demand so much of us, all of the places that we, have, we feel like we need to be present. I hear about all the disturbing things, some awful things that we've, been, we've seen done in the name of God, in the name through, through churches. All of these present challenges. All of this, we face challenges ahead. But I have good news for us. First of all, and I'm going to ask you all to lean in a little bit. This is good news. Now, come on, lean in. He is risen. Yes. First of all, that is the reason, right? Because Christ is alive. And he's risen. That's why we do all of this. Because Christ, our Savior, is there for us. That's the beginning. That's the reason. That's the reason we do it. Second, look around. We have incredible people. We have incredible people sharing good news that Christ is risen. And how we love one another. And how we care for each other. So Christ is risen. We have really good people. We have a wonderful church. I'm encouraged. I'm really encouraged with where we are as spirit of life. From young people to old, from everywhere in between, from so many places, a wonderful, diverse, beautiful, incredible church family. So what are the best ways that you can help? What's the, what's the most important thing that we can do to help? You're going to hear this a lot for a while, so get ready. By coming to church. Here or online, we have a vibrant online community sharing with each other. Keep connecting. Keep sharing. If you're one that's been quiet, risk a little. Reach out. There's some wonderful people in our community together. It's wonderful. Come to church. The best way to help grow the church, the best way for us to grow is by coming to church. Because it adds. The, the more people kept coming in today, it adds to the energy, doesn't it? When we look next to us and, and we're thankful for the people that, that, that are next to us. So a commitment as leaders of this church, to help welcome new people, let's make the commitment best we can to come to church, not out of guilt, not out of shame, but because he's risen. Actively participating, helping us strengthen and grow good soil where we love God and we love our neighbor. The last few weeks, Since our fall kickoff, more people coming to church, it makes a difference. So for all of us, young and old, near and far, black and white, no matter who you love, the important thing is that in loving God, we help better love each other. And in doing that, our neighbors need to know the love of God. Come to church. Help us. Help us to continue to nurture and plant good soil. Plant seeds in the good soil. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you Amen, 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 Amen. us in your wisdom to plant our small seeds generously. Use our gifts to accomplish more than we could possibly imagine, so that through us your kingdom come and your will be done right here. Amen.
Greetings from your stewardship committee. I'm Steve Lewis. I've had the pleasure of working with a fine team to uh, begin our 2023 stewardship campaign. Can anybody tell me what you think the theme is? All together. Perfect. Perfect. I want to talk to you for a minute about a church. Not our church. It's a church in Fairfield, New Jersey. It's the Fairfield Presbyterian Church. It's been around for 315 years, and it's still going strong. They have a building that they're still using that was constructed back way back when, and uh, they're still using it as a Sunday school uh, building. So there's 26 members, and you think they struggled with some of the same things that Spirit of Life struggles with? Finance, yeah. turmoil. They had an American Revolution they had to deal with. You know, we had COVID, they had an American Revolution. But you know, they had, the, they had the, the, the initiative to start the church, and they planted seeds, and their early work paid off. Thousands of people have come through that church over, over many, many generations. It's an amazing story, and it's a story that maybe Spirit of Life should try and emulate. We're planting seeds right now, and every contribution of both time and money not only makes a difference today, but will make a difference in the future, well into the future. We may not enjoy the shade from the tree that we plant today, but those who come after us certainly will. We have a lot more tomorrows than yesterdays, and with God's help, historians may write our story into the future. You know, I have a business associate that uh, doesn't believe in church. And he asked me, he said, why do you go to church? Why do you end up spending money? Why do you give to the stewardship campaigns? Why do you take part in the stewardship committees? Well, I'll tell you what, this church has something going for it. It's almost like lightning in a bottle. It's connections. It's community. It's a sense of community. It's the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit working all through this place and in each and every one of us. You know, I, I, I really appreciated the connection. And on my fifth back surgery, I have to tell a story. Fifth back surgery, I, I had a miserable month, the month of December. I was in bed the whole month. And I had so many visitors from the church. And they came and they prayed with me and talked with me. And, and it was just great. But I tell you what, the, the one visit that, that stuck out in my mind was the visit that Alvine and her two sons, Josh and Joe, when they came over and Josh and Joe baked a pie for me. They baked a pie <laughs> themselves, and they were so proud of that pie. They were just beaming. And uh, to me, that was, that was a, just an unbelievable moving moment when they came and, and visited. It was really, really a fine moment. And, and it says a lot for our youth. You know, we've watched these young people grow up, and they've grown up to be fine, fine young men in, in Josh and Joe. And, and all the others that are, are working with us. There's few investments that we can make today that have a, have a more lasting impact than supporting the church and all the, the mission. So please prayerfully consider the seeds that you can plant in our 2023 campaign. We're going to be passing out some pledge cards, and we would urge you to pledge early and pledge often. <laughs> anyway, uh, but, but uh, we'll also be mailing a letter to the congregation, and that letter will have a seed packet, and along with some words that describe why the seeds were selected in the packet. These seeds were all gathered from our, our garden and from the, from the grounds. It's really pretty, pretty cool. So look for that letter coming this week. We'll probably send you another pledge card just so we can have, I'd rather have, have, have you had two than, than none. So if you've got any questions for the stewardship committee, please, please raise them. But uh, we do appreciate it. And uh, we sure appreciate the cinnamon rolls that came out early too. So Rob, maybe you could bless the cinnamon rolls for us. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. 
Thank you, Stewardship Committee, for all of the, the work that you've done to prepare today. Thank you for helping. Um, as soon, we're going to move into full breakfast. Um, but uh, I was enjoying my cinnamon roll there. And then I looked up and I noticed I was on video. I'm like, that looks really great. Um, <laughs> but it's delicious. So it's wonderful. Thank you all. As we move into this time of prayer, I've got to grab those prayer cards here. Help to share your prayers online through our Facebook link, and they will be transferred up to me. And help, help us this week together to, to remember these prayers and continually pray. Pray when you're at meal. Pray, pray and when you wake up. Pray when you go to bed. Let's, let's help pray for each other. Let us come to God in prayer. Lord God, we come with grateful hearts for the life that we have and the life that we share. Lord, we pray to know and to share your peace for all the earth. As we pray for all who hunger, all who might need a kind word, a compassion, a friend. We pray for all struggling with anxiety and mental health. We pray for each other as we lift the prayers of this community. As we pray together for Larry Jr., prayers for healing because Larry sustained a strong blow to his head this week and is being evaluated for a concussion. God, help bring healing and peace for Larry Jr. God, we pray for, for Stephanie, Becky's cousin, who had a heart attack on Friday. She is in ICU with arterial bleeding. God, our great healer, help be with Stephanie. God, we, we pray in this really hard week, hard week for, in our community, a teacher at Echo Park, a teacher of, of one of our children in this church, as Alyssa Schmidt, as we pray for Alyssa Schmidt and her brother Matt, as as they died this last week in a plane crash. We pray for, for her. We pray for her brother and the family and all of the children, all of the teachers in the community at Echo Park, and for all their loved ones. And this loss of a beloved colleague, friend, and teacher. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, we, we hold prayers, surround prayers for Sarah Grasick and Sarah's family, Ryan, Ray, and Josh, and the loss of her father this last week. May they know your comfort. God, hear our prayer. We lift prayers for all of those affected by Hurricane Ian, all of those affected from Florida through the Carolinas, all of the ways that it, through this recovery, Lord, work through us. Lord, hear our prayer. God, we, we come today holding all these prayers and giving thanks for life as we celebrate life, as we celebrate birthdays, as we today celebrate with Matt for his 99th birthday. God, giving thanks for him. Dear Lord, help us to hold fast. Help us to grow in you. Help us to know your love and share it as we go forth from here. As we ask you to bless this meal, this meal we are about to have, to share as we break bread, as we seek all the ways that people know that we belong. And in concluding this prayer, we are all going to pray singing, The Lord is good to me. Oh, 
the Lord, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed, the Lord is good to me, amen, 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 amen. Let us pray together the words that that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine's the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In a moment, we ask all to stay and join us for breakfast. Let's continue to to nurture relationships. Let's be strengthened in Christ's love. We, We give thanks for Matt today. Happy birthday, Matt. We're glad to have you. We celebrate with you. Um, we're going to eat for a little while. Let's, let's enjoy our breakfast. And then those that are going to confirmation, we will meet back in my office uh, about 30, 30 minutes from now. We'll do a shortened version this week. But to help get confirmation rolling, we will meet today. Any other announcements today? Let us now stand for our closing song. I'm going to live so God can use me. the seeds that fell on the good soil. Or maybe it's the seeds where a community continued to nurture so that there was good soil. So doing all of that so that it helped lead to something, lead to something growing beyond all of our wildest dreams. Let us help. Let us help the good farmer. Let us walk alongside knowing the love that we have in Jesus. May the love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the peace and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Now we are going to have breakfast. We prayed it's all ready, and uh, I'm going to let our crew in the back help direct traffic.